for good. Um, all right, so welcome to LED's 8th Pro Workshop webinar. We are so excited you're here. My name is Rebecca Healy. I'm the Sales and Marketing Coordinator. This is Stephanie Berrigan, Inside Sales, uh, Sean Playhaven, he's our Solar Engineer, and David Gershaw, he's our Chief Innovation Officer. So after the webinar, we're going to go ahead and have a quiz. Um, really, the point of the quiz is to make sure that you're taking away, you know, the, the key elements that we feel are really going to help you sell this product. If you receive 80% or better on the quiz, um, you'll be answered into a drawing to win a $100 Visa gift card. So if you're in a group setting, I really want you to make sure you grab your cell phone and log in, you know, because I want you to be able to be a part of that. Um, during the webinar, if you have any questions, uh, please use the chat box. Uh, we will, Stephanie and I will do our best to answer those. If we're not able to, David Gershaw and Sean at the very end will have, have a Q&A and they'll be able to. So, welcome again. So who's presenting today? David Gershaw. He's the Chief Innovation Officer. He's based out of Milton, Massachusetts. He's also a great fisherman, as you saw. <laughs> and uh, Sean Playhaven. He's our solar engineer. And he is based out of Kerry with Stephanie and I. Um, he received a degree in renewable energy from Illinois State. Um, on the right side, you're going to see the LED team. We had our sales and marketing summit in August. So it was a really awesome picture of all of us. And I just look at that photo and I just see all these smiles. And it's amazing coming to work every day, like working with people who want to be here. That is, that is not something that companies have. So awesome. So the goal of these workshops um it's just uh go ahead and update you on both the lighting industry and our company um also update you on any cool new products anything that um we, we you know it is current i uh, leave you with a case study and then just to test your knowledge and have an open discussion at the end so go ahead david thanks rebecca all right so um the first part of the presentation today is going to be on an industry update not so much a company update but an industry update so this is some really cool technology. Um, it's called Li-Fi. And again, this is, you know, in this portion, usually we're either talking about a company update or an industry update. This is a really cool technology that I just thought was a lot of fun. And I wanted to make sure that everyone um, knew about it because it's really exciting. And I actually had a chance a couple of weeks ago to experience it uh, live and in person. And it's very, very cool. So everyone knows what Li-Fi is, obviously. We all use Wi-Fi. We have for many years. It's a huge part of our life. The idea of Li-Fi is to provide wireless internet via light fixtures. So this was really, really cool. Basically, what, what I had during this demo was, um, was I had my iPhone, and it was a case that went on the iPhone with a little receiver on the bottom of it. And I was sitting in, in, a, uh, in an office with a, with a bench and a couch and some tables and chairs. And anywhere you went under the light fixtures, you'd be getting high-speed internet access. And that high-speed internet access was not coming from you know, normal Wi-Fi, it was coming from those LED fixtures. So I have a little video here that I'll play. And uh, just a cool little video that, that introduces you to the concept of Li-Fi. Imagine a world with unprecedented data and bandwidth. Every year, the world consumes 60% more wireless data. The space for radio frequencies is becoming oversaturated, resulting in what is known as the spectrum crunch. Eventually, radio frequency technology like Wi-Fi and cellular networks will no longer keep up with demand. But imagine you had Li-Fi. Li-Fi doesn't use radio frequencies. It uses the light spectrum, which can open up 1,000 times more bandwidth. Li-Fi will be an integral part of the future of wireless networks, such as 5G. With Li-Fi, we can efficiently use our existing light infrastructures to provide high-speed, secure wireless communications. Li-Fi does not interfere with radio frequencies, which means you can use it in hospitals, power plants, petrochemical plants, and airplanes. The illumination area of Li-Fi is confined to the area that the light touches, which means that unlike Wi-Fi, your signal remains hidden to anyone outside this area. The light is controllable. Simply shut the door or pull the blinds to protect your network from prying eyes. 
Li-Fi, a world with unprecedented data and bandwidth. Be part of the light revolution. So, you know, obviously, obviously, right? Um, it, it was amazing in person uh, to see this working. Uh, just incredible. A big part of it is security, right? So with wa- regular Wi-Fi, big concern you have is that it's really difficult to control those radio waves, those emissions. So in other words, somebody could pick up your Wi-Fi network maybe outside of your building, right? With Li-Fi, unless you're directly under those light fixtures, there's no way to pick up that, that network. So really cool technology, perhaps here at Light Efficient Design Remfos, we're going to be integrating Li-Fi into our fixtures at some point in the future, but it's a really exciting development in lighting in general, just something fun, a topic that's uh, really interesting and fun that you can talk about uh, with your customers, with your colleagues. So why are we really here today? Not to talk about Li-Fi, but to talk about solar lighting. Um, and before we go into some of the product updates, we have four really, really interesting products, amazing products, little sneak peek on the bottom of that slide there as to the four that we're going to be discussing. But before I go into the detail, uh, actually, Sean is going to go into the detail of those, our product manager on solar. I want to first give some context, some high-level context as to why we're in solar lighting to begin with um, and real, where we're really headed with this technology, because it's an unbelievably exciting technology and here at Light Efficient Design, we're going full speed ahead to develop the most comprehensive uh, product line to make sure that we become and stay the leader in this category. So, photos on the screen. Some of you have seen before, but basically, we got into solar lighting here at Light Efficient Design back about five years ago. And these are photos from Tanzania. So, we have a partner that does a lot of work in Tanzania, and they came to us about five years ago and said, can you please help us develop a solar home lighting kit? So, and not necessarily for homes, but they could also be used for schools or small hospitals, um, doctor's offices, but basically something you can see in the bottom left here, the the battery box called Firefly. So that's the battery box. And there are these five little uh, hockey puck LED lights that are connected by like a 30 foot cord. And then you have this gentleman on the top right here that's putting the solar panel up. Basically the kit that we provided was a solar panel, this battery box, and then these LED lights. And we built about 50,000 of these kits, unbelievably proud of this project, that were deployed to Tanzania in Africa. And um, just we, we got amazing letters from, from, uh, from people living in the communities, from the photo in the bottom right there with the boy uh, studying. That was from a school, local school, that installed this Firefly solar lighting kit. And they were able to study a lot later at night. So really, really beautiful, um, you know, exciting project. And then about a year later, we started to do uh, street, street lighting and roadway lighting in Tanzania. And that's where we really got into the commercial industrial aspect of the project um, or of the technology, where we went from that residential system to the commercial industrial products that we're bringing to market to today. The big difference between what we were doing back there in Tanzania and what we're doing here in the United States and Canada is that those systems were really bulky, heavy, separate component systems, where today, everything that we're developing and bringing to market is completely all-in-one solutions. And we'll talk about what we mean by that um, during Sean's presentation. So when I talk about, and when I talk about where we're headed with solar lighting, and I want you to think about this because you can apply this same kind of, um, the same kind of positioning when you're out there with your customers. I really see two categories today that exist, and we're creating a brand new third category. On one hand, you have really cheap, inexpensive, um, not very high quality, probably made for residential, no warranty. You're not going to want to use these industrial settings. Right? Really inexpensive. Those are a couple, you know, it took from Amazon, I believe, $5, $10 items. Not something that you would want to recommend to a professional. Not something that you'd want to put on the side of a building and guarantee it's going to last three years, five years or more. And then on the other hand, you have what I'd call expensive engineered solutions. So these solutions have been around for a number of years. Um, they're great solutions, but they're very expensive. Sometimes with parking lot, parking lot solutions, we're talking about four, five, six, seven thousand dollars per pole in a parking lot. Um, separate components. So you can see in that photo, you have that solar panel up top. You have your battery box. You have a separate light fixture really bulky to ship, um, difficult to see if it's going to fit on your particular pole, requires labor and wiring to mount the separate components and wire them together. 
And then engineering wise, oftentimes there's a lot of engineering involved. So it's not an easy sell. It's a very highly technical sell. Here at Light Efficient Design, we're creating a whole new category and we're naming this category Solera Solar Lighting. So this is our new brand name and we're not gonna talk a lot about that today because we are gonna do a, a larger launch very soon. But Solera Solar Lighting is gonna be the brand name, just like Remfoss is a brand name. So the Solera Solar Lighting is gonna be our brand name for all our solar lighting projects products under the light efficient design company name. So in this, this category, this whole new category, what's different about it compared to the really inexpensive, low cost, no warranty stuff, and the really highly engineered, very expensive, difficult to use solutions. So we're the first to market with easy to use, reliable, plug and play, all in one solar lighting products. We want these to be very easy to use, friendly solutions that a distributor or contractor or an end user can take it out of the box, install it. They understand how, it, how it's used, does not require a lot of labor because they're all in one solutions where that solar panel, battery and, uh, and light engine and your controller is all in one package. You don't have separate components like some of those engineered solutions. So three important notes on our, our off-grid solar products. The reason why I wanna put these three notes on the screen is that these are, these are three key points that when you're with customers, I know that when I'm with customers, these are three key points that you'd wanna train them to understand about our off-grid products. And the reason why I say off-grid is that pretty soon we have some really exciting new technology, our hybrid solutions um, coming to market, that instead of just being purely off-grid, meaning you have no wires going to them, they'll have both wires and solar. So you'll be able to connect them to the grid and then also pull from the sun. Um, the system will intelligently decide using its, its processor, its, its uh, controller, how to optimize your energy usage so that you're pulling as much from the sun as possible. So point one, off-grid solar lighting that we're here talking about today is perfect for what I'd say are non-critical lighting applications. A non a, a application that does not require a guarantee that 365 nights a year, the lights are gonna be on till the morning. Um, not a solution for bank or hospital parking lots. So a critical lighting situation or application would be that bank parking lot or hospital parking lot where 365 nights a year, you're gonna, be, you're gonna want to, the customer is gonna want you to guarantee them, just like with regular LED parking lot lighting or exterior lighting, that all night long, every single night from dusk to dawn, the lights are guaranteed to be on. That's a critical lighting application. What would be an example of a non-critical lighting application? Well, here in our industrial park in Middleton, where I'm sitting today or standing, um, we, I'd say that's a non-critical application. In fact, we're looking very soon to install our off-grid solutions here. Um, you know, here it, it's okay if a few nights of the year uh, when it's really cold and the battery's not charging as, as rapidly, that the lights don't make it all night to, to uh, the morning, that's, that's okay. Um, what are some other non-critical applications? How about a, uh, a, a pathway from, uh, you know, in, in a, a walking path from buildings to buildings? I recently did a project at a university where they didn't really have any lighting between their dorm buildings. It was a large university. And I explained to them, this was here in the Northeast where we have cold winters. And I said, look, you're not, we're not necessarily going to be able to promise you that every single night of the year, especially in the winter, those lights make it all the way to morning. Almost every night they'll be on for a few hours um, after, after sunset when it starts to get dark, but we can't guarantee on some of those really cold nights or days where there's a bunch of clouds in a row that they're gonna have enough charge to make it the morning. And they said, David, we understand it's gonna be so much better than what we have today, this, the situation we have today where there's really no lighting. So that's another example of, look, you explain the limitations that you can't necessarily guarantee it, you tell them that chances are they're gonna be on the vast majority of the year, and the customer agrees that it's gonna be a lot more for safety and security, a lot better for safety and security than what they have today. So that's point one. Point two is that batteries do not charge as well in cold weather, and panels obviously don't charge as well in shade. Um, why do batteries not charge or discharge as well in cold weather? It's because a battery has a bunch of electrons basically moving around inside of it, and when it's nice and warm outside or even um, you know, reasonable temperatures, those electrons can move really fast and that battery can charge and discharge quickly. When it starts to get cold, those electrons start to kind of gum up. There's a lot of resistance. They start to move a lot slower and it becomes a lot more difficult for them to charge and discharge. 
So um, basically what we say is that for the most part, our off-grid solutions will, um, will discharge below freezing up to about negative 14 degrees Fahrenheit, but they'll only charge till freezing about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and you're discharging at night, right? That battery is, is outputting to the lights at night and it's gonna be charging during the day when the sun is out, right? And it's okay that even that, that, that the battery will only accept a charge at a higher temperature than it will discharge. The reason for that is that you can picture during the day with that sun, even if it's very cold out freezing, blasting down on that solar panel, that dark solar panel, and then charging, uh, sending some heat because it's so dark into that battery box, your light fixture, that battery box is gonna be warmer than outside temperatures. So that's why that it, will, it will charge even in very cold temperatures. Um, and we've had that experience in Chicago where we have a bunch of these installed and here in Boston where um, at my home, I've had them installed for two winters and we obviously get some very cold and even dark days in the winter. Um, but there really haven't been, been many days in the, uh, many nights, nights rather in the winter where I have not seen them on in the morning. And then number three, um, our solutions are designed to provide sufficient light levels and last in difficult climates and they're rugged and not toys. This is a really key point. Um, and again, it comes back to um, in that previous slide how we're talking about that a lot of the solar industry um, or a lot of the lighting industry might think that solar lighting is kind of cheap landscape lighting or stuff that's more for resi, for residential uses, where these solutions are really tried and true um, solutions that we put a lot of engineering in and use very high quality materials. Wanted to quickly touch on, this is a document that we've, uh, we've had for a couple months now, but this is available on PDF on our website or any of our reps have it if you'd like a hard copy. But this is called our Solar Lighting Best Practices and Guidelines Booklet. And it's, it's a quick flyer that is perfect for you out there selling, it's perfect for the installer, and it really just kind of outlines some basic things that aren't so obvious with just regular LED lighting, but pretty, pretty understandable basic concepts that you should really understand before going into solar lighting, where to use it, where not to use it, how to install it so that there aren't any issues. That best practices and guideline book from our experience, if you do use that and give it to your customer, to your installer, to your end user, that can save you a lot of headaches down the road. So this is very exciting. We have a brochure coming out very soon. Um, this is kind of our little, the concept here is like our solar city. And the idea here is that we have a, a solar fixture for basically the majority of outdoor exterior lighting applications. So over on the left, you see our wall pack that we've talked about and launched in previous months. This has been very successful. We've been selling a lot of these. We have one that replaces up to a 50 watt, 50 watt HID, that's a halogen, but it is HID. Another one that replaces up to 100 watt. Um, unbelievably successful product. Customers have been very happy with it. Mounting it on, um, on, on warehouses, buildings, loading docks that don't have lighting and boy they'd love to have some additional lighting and not have to run wires which are obviously very expensive our solar area light the sal the next fixture there um, sean's going to talk about some really cool developments that we have with color temperatures um, and a little little clue uh, for that that turtle down there um, and then the four in the middle or i'm going to save that for sean that's what we're going to launch today and then over on the right we have our step light and our wall mount light um, again we've launched these in previous months They've been really successful, really exciting. So this will be a brochure that's gonna be available to our reps very soon to, uh, to hand out to any of your customers to do training, basically showing how significant of a lineup we have in solar lighting. This is also pretty cool. So we're gonna have a solar, solar wagon. This is obviously a sketch, but we're gonna have a very cool uh, little display that um, is on wheels. That's why we're calling our solar wagon. It's gonna be compact. Um, something that you can wheel outside, and this is going to be available to our distributor branches, our key distributor branches, to have on their site so that contractors and users can walk up to that branch and actually see these products and feel these products and see the quality with their own eyes. So with that, we're not going to skip right to the case study, but um, I'm going to hand it over to Sean. Sean is our product manager for solar. Hi, guys. I'm super excited to share with you these products that we designed and engineered. Uh, so let's get right to it. The first product that we're gonna show off here is our solar bollard light. So the solar bollard light is two watts and is comparable to a 30 watt halogen. It's extra durable, uses high grade aluminum, and it's got that classic bollard design, which is really cool. So 
It's an all-in-one design. The solar panel and the battery are built right into the LED fixture. There's no need for uh, trenching or wiring. This fixture does not connect to any power feed. And it's got 23 hours of 100% brightness on one charge. It uses an advanced new lithium iron phosphate battery uh, that lasts 2000 charge cycles and it is replaceable. So where would this be located? Where would you wanna use this product? So the bollard's great for pathways, parks, schools, outside of commercial buildings, offices, you name it. Wherever there is a bollard, you can use this bollard and put it there. Uh, the bracket is gonna be the same mounting as the other bollards that are installed before. So in most cases, it will work with the existing mounting. And then the second product that we're gonna be talking about today is the solar post top. So this has an angled top lens, which prevents debris and buildup and also helps collect the sunlight to direct it down at the solar panel. Uh, it's also got two 240 degree motion sensors, which is nice. So any angle that someone's walking, it'll be able to detect it. And it is 20 watts. So this is comparable to a 150 watt HID. Again, it's got that all in one design. Everything's built into the LED fixture, and there's no need for trenching or wiring. It also has a long life battery, which lasts three nights with a one day charge. And it's got a lithium iron battery, which lasts 1500 charge cycles, and it is replaceable. And lastly, about this product, it has two different operating modes. So depending on how long you click the button, which is on the slip fitter bracket, um, there's mode one and mode two. Really the only difference is one of the modes starts off at a higher percentage of lumen output. And then the mode that has a lower percentage uh, output on the lumens, which is mode two, uh, actually ramps up towards the end of the night. So as it gets closer to morning, it'll ramp up. And that's just to help with uh, you know people maybe that are walking in, they could see the light from a distance further. And then another thing I want to touch on is the motion sensors active on both modes. So this light isn't going to run at 100% unless somebody is near it. And we'll get more into that next. So we do recommend spacing these out um, around 40 feet. And the sensor distance is about 24 feet. So anytime you're within that 24 feet, it'll either ramp up from 30 or 35%, depending on what mode it is, to the 100% when it senses that motion. And that motion sensor is active during the whole phase of the light's modes. It's gonna fit poles three to 3.5 inches in diameter. It's got an install height of eight to 12 feet. And this is perfect for green spaces, greenway lighting, parks, parking lots, transit shelters, and stops, you name it. The third product we're gonna talk about today is a solar floodlight, which I have here, if no one saw it earlier. It's got a nice battery meter on the side and the panel is rotatable. So depending on your latitude of the US, you can adjust that to its optimal setting. It's 20 watts and is comparable to 150 watt HID. Again, got that all in one design. Everything's built right into the fixture. So it's got four hours at 100% brightness and then 25% for the remainder of the night on one charge. And the battery can support five to six nights with cloudy days. So where is this good to install? It's perfect for signage, walls, pathways, and garden features. And I want to touch on another thing too. A lot of these solar lights that I showed you today, they charge within an eight to nine hour span of good sunlight. All right, so the fourth and final product I want to talk to you on the new update is the solar display light. So again, this has a battery meter. It's 20 watts, just like the solar floodlight and is comparable to 150 watts HID. All in one design. It's about four feet in length, and it runs with four hours of 100% brightness and then 25% uh, 
uh, the remainder of the night on one charge. Use is a lithium iron battery, which lasts 1500 charge cycles and is replaceable. So all these products I talked about today, the battery is replaceable. So where do you want to use this? You can use this on billboards, signs, mounted up against the wall. And what's cool is we do have an accessory called the long arm mount, which will help, uh, it'll help for non-permanent installation. So let's say you don't want to install this permanently somewhere. You just want to see how it looks. You can use this long arm mount and it also helps extend it away from the wall. So if there's something that you're trying to shine it down on it and having it too close to the wall is inhibiting that, just get this accessory and you're good to go. All right, so just some solar news on some other cool products that we're coming out with here shortly is the hybrid light. So this light is gonna work on line voltage and use solar power. So you're gonna have lighting no matter what. It's gonna be a 250 watt replacement area light and it's going to be 30 watts. And you can see that picture up here on the right. So it has the ability to be all in one, but it also has the ability for the panel to be mounted elsewhere. So let's say, you know, it's on the north facing wall and you don't want that panel on that north side because it's not as efficient as having it on the south side. You can mount it on the rooftop. Uh, you can mount it on the wall but most cases you're gonna mount it directly on top of that fixture. The panel can angle, you can get different Calvins, and you can get e even different types too. So different type lenses, type three, type four, type five, we're gonna have it all. So this is a very exciting product and we've worked really hard to develop this and I'm really excited. And then finally, what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is the RP cell units. Do you guys are familiar with that unit? Um, it is a 30 watt unit and we also have the eight watt unit, but what's cool now is we offer it in 3000 K and 4000 K. And then we also offer a 580 nanometer amber color, which is a turtle friendly light. And that is it for me, David, take it away. Thanks, Sean. So that, that turtle, the turtle wavelength is very exciting for the, uh, for the SAL, the solar area light. Um, we've been getting quite a few requests from especially areas um, down, you know, near the coast, say near Florida that, or, or in Florida or down the coast, even in California, that hotels that need these products that don't emit wavelengths that bother the turtles. So that's why we, we designed that. So before I, um, before I, let's see, go back to the presentation, I do wanna show, I have the post-op fixture. So here's the post op right here. And you can see what I love about it is that it's a really kind of classic colonial design. Um, it even has some of the really nice little features in the housing um, to make it look really classic. And that's a, that was a big priority in a lot of our designs. Is that we want these fixtures to look very classic, very normal, not look out of place. So really nice design there. If I flip it over here, you can see the solar panels um, under the lens. And of course we have that curved lens, both for aesthetic purposes, but also so that say we're up here in the Northeast. I recently did a project on a golf here in Massachusetts and we want to make sure that that snow rolls off of that, right? So that's really nice from that perspective. Um, you can see the LED engine inside of there and that's going to make sure that that has optics on it to send the light to the ground. Then there's even a nice white reflector in there so that if any light from those LEDs did go upwards, it's gonna be sent down to the ground to be really efficient. And then down here, um, we have, Sean talked about how there's two PIR sensors, one, two. The purpose of those two sensors, the benefit of those two sensors so that you have 360 degrees of illumination, of, uh, of sensing, motion sensing all around that fixture. And then like Sean mentioned down below, and this whole below piece here is a really nice strong die casting, but this will accept a three, three and a half inch pole or because most a lot of times you'll see decorative poles um, out there that are four five six seven inches in diameter depending on what style pole it is a lot of times they'll have maybe a five six seven inch pole you'll have a little pipe adapter on the top to, to reduce the size down to that three three and a half inch size that'll fit into the bottom of that post top so that's the post top and then i will grab the eight the bollard fixture right here 
And this baller, what I love about, one of the big things I love about this baller is that this is obviously going to be in places that, you know, could get a lot of abuse, right? You have people walking by it, maybe kicking it, um, hopefully not cars driving into it, although I've seen that before. But um, this is a really nice, strong, rugged, die-cast housing. It's not plastic. It doesn't look cheap. It looks like a quality ball and fixture, just as if it wasn't solar to begin with. It looks like a regular, high-quality LED um, professional use bollard fixture. Up top here, you can see that solar panel. So our light engine is right there. And again, that's gonna that's designed with optics to really optimize sending that light to the ground. And then as Sean mentioned down below, you have um, room for bolts. And this fits most bolt patterns, most typical bolt patterns that you would use for a, a again, a non-solar um, bollard fixture. So just a really quality, easy to use product right there, the solar bollard. So I am going to bring back up the workshop here and Rebecca is going to take over and bring us through our case study. Okay, perfect. Hi guys, so I just wanted to tell everyone about our success story, um, which takes place in Ontario, Canada. Uh, the name of the dog park actually is the Zilda Dog Park. They started off as an abandoned baseball field and they turned it into a dog park about four years ago. They had their fencing, they had their property, they were just missing lighting. They were literally using their car headlights to light up the park. Doris and Victor, they were local residents, they reached out to their distributor who recommended 430 solar watt lights, which were placed on two 24 foot poles. The city officials said that they were really easy to install and their performance was extremely better than they thought a 30 watt could achieve. So we're very happy for the dogs. As you can see, it's really well lit up. Um, David, if you wanna to go to the next slide, we have Victor here who is our local resident who reached out and they're super happy. We help retrofit for the doggies, we will help retrofit for the turtles, we'll help retrofit you, anything that you can think of. <laughs> I think what, I appreciate that, Steph, and I think another key point about this project is this project is obviously pretty far up north, right? This is up there in Ontario, Canada. Um, gets pretty cold in the winter. They probably have quite a few cloudy days. Um, the rep and distributor in this case did a really great job educating their, their customer, their end user, explaining again what I talked about before, that there are limitations to off-grid solar lighting. That you know, there may be some of those nights that the lights don't make it all the way through the night. In this case, the customer understands that and they accept that because like Steph said, they were using car headlights before. So even though there may be a few nights in the winter that this is not gonna be illuminated all night long, it's gonna be a heck of a lot better than the situation that they have now. So this is obviously gonna make it a lot safer um, more, you know, more secure. It's going to make the people using the dog park make a lot more, uh, feel a lot more comfortable. So great, great little uh, case study there. Thank you, girl.